friends uh, once again i welcome you back to this class of video lecture uh, friends this is ba part second english literature and we have been taking paper 1 for last couple of days so today we take up a very famous poem by william cooper and the title of the poem is light shining out of darkness uh, friends uh, Uh, William Cooper is one of the harbingers of romanticism and the present poem the poem light shining out of darkness is one of Cooper's most famous short hymns the poet says that god moves in a mysterious way his ways are strange and cannot be understood by a man god is beyond the understanding of man since he is full of mystery he is ever kind and merciful we shouldn't judge god by our feeble sense of sight or hearing friends it is a short of religious poem and in this poem the nature of god the abode of god and the characteristic of god have been described by the poet the poet says that we shouldn't judge god by our feeble sense of sight or hearing we should firmly believe in his grace and mercy god may appear to be frowning on us but behind that there is always a smiling face god always does good and is ever merciful in the beginning he may appear bitter but is always kind in reality yes just are the ways of god and justifiable to man milton says in his famous poem samson against his and the same lines find a very parallel a very suitable parallel in the beginning of the paradise lost where the poet says i may assert the eternal providence and justify the ways of god to man God is not a wicked avenger God is not a wicked revenger whatever we suffer here over this on this earth solely or solely because of our own actions that may be virtuous that may be vicious so in the beginning god may appear bitter but is always kind in reality the benevolence of god is always praiseworthy the bud may taste bitter but the flower is always sweet we shouldn't therefore be so blind as to disbelieve in god's mercy we shouldn't try to scan god's ways just are the ways of god god has his own ways to show his grace and mercy at the right moment he shows at the right moment he shows his mercy so i read the opening lines first so the gist of the poem is very much clear in this poem the mercy and benevolence of god has been depicted by the poet and the poet says that uh, god can never be you know merciless for man and mankind since we are the descendants of god so i read the first uh, the opening lines of the poem uh, god moves in a mysterious way his wonders to perform he plants his footsteps in the sea and rides upon the storm deep in unfathomable minds unfathomable minds of never falling skill he treasures up his bright designs and walks his sovereign will ye fearful sands fresh courage take the clouds ye so much dread so the poet says in the beginning of this poem that god acts in a mysterious way yes the mystery is one of the main characteristic feature of god human beings are not mysterious but god is mysterious in what way how does he act is beyond man and mankind so the poet says 
that God acts in a mysterious manner. We do not understand the way God performs His actions. He is all powerful. God is all powerful. God is almighty, the most mightiest creature on this earth. And He can do things which man cannot understand. Yes, whatever God does, man can never do and can do nothing, can do everything which man cannot understand. He stands in the sea, yes. Binapadu chalavi karama binu nana, Tulsida says in Ramcharit Manas, karabinu karai karama bidu nana. This parallel, it's a religious poem, friends, and uh, you can find many such suitable parallels in Hindi poetry also. He stands in the sea, yes. Who could stand in the sea? Who could walk down on the waters of the sea? Only God can walk down. He can ride upon the storm. He can be seen walking in deep mines, the depth of which cannot be measured, unfathomable caves. His actions are done with a sure hand. He never falls. He has his own plans and like a sovereign ruler, carries out his will. There is nothing in this world which can cause God's acts to fall in their design. Yes. So, further the poet says uh, that the poet exhorts the saints to take courage and not be fearful. God is always merciful. You fearful saints, fresh courage take. The clouds ye so much dread are big with mercy and shall break in blessings on your head. God is always merciful. The sorrows and sufferings are like dreadful clouds which break in merciful rains. Yes, sorrow, suffering, twists, deaths, trials, vicissitudes and vagaries occur in the lives of man. Happiness is an occasional episode. There are so many lines in literature which relate the sad plight of man. But the, finally the poet says that all sorrows and sufferings get broken in merciful rains which bring blessings to the farmers and others. God acts in a mysterious way and the storms and tempests end in peace and happiness. God is always merciful. He may sometimes appear to be full of anger and threat, but in the end he gives happiness to all. The poet advises, judge not the Lord by feeble sense, but trust him for his grace. Behind a frowning providence he hides a smiling face. The poet suggests people not to judge God by what they see or hear. God acts in a mysterious way and what appears may not be true. We must have trust in God's mercy. We must trust in God's mercy and what appears terrible and painful may ultimately prove God's mercy. God's aim is to do good to man but God's ways are mysterious and hidden. God's mercy is very visible and it becomes known just as the bud is bitter but the flower is sweet, beautiful and fragrant. In the same way, God's actions may appear hard and fearful yet they are always good for us. So, uh, in this way the poem continues friends. The bud may have a bitter taste but sweet will be the flower. Blind unbelief is sure to error, and scan is walk in vain. God is his own interpreter, and he will make it plain. This, these are the concluding lines of the poem. The poet says that God's actions are mysterious, they are hidden, man cannot understand them, we do not know what God will do, what is the real nature of God, 
what is this triangular relationship between man nature and god many a times god appear to be frowning this makes us sad we begin to think that god will punish us we begin to disbelieve in god's mercy but this is blind unbelief it is surely wrong it is wrong to scan god's actions and disbelieve in his mercy god has his own manner of showing his mercy when time comes god will himself make all his actions plain and clear so this is a very wonderful poem friends on the mercy of god on the benevolence of god so there are some words which you need to know move movements acts mysterious which is unknown uh, storms rising waves of the sea unfathomable the depth which cannot be measured treasure up hidden sovereign which is the most mightiest sovereign dread terrible mercy you know mercy means daya and uh, Uh, scan means judging frowning um, frowning means angry so uh, interpreter one who expl- uh, explains or one who um, you know make the things clear so thank you friends thank you so much